I got to the point where I was even laying hands on my wife in front of my sons. My father-in-law was, was like, I'm done with you, Mark. You know, and he, he put up a fence and he said, you're not allowed on my property pretty much. What? This, this, this can't be happening. Like, tonight's the night, this dude that put out a hit out on me and my family, tonight's gonna be the night that he dies. Plain and simple. It's either he's gonna die or I'm gonna die, that's it. Me and my brothers, we uh, we got together and we ordered a hit on this dude, and it only cost two thousand dollars. I remember a dude came, um, came to my house and said, "Man, I got a thousand dollars to get this done." So this night, so that day, I remember telling my wife, "I was like, it's, it's gonna happen. Tonight's gonna be the day." I ended up calling my brother, like, "Hey, it's about to go down tonight. Let's pack up our stuff. You know, let's get ready for this alibi." He didn't answer, he didn't call back, nothing. So I messaged him and I, then I went on Facebook and I messaged him and I saw that he saw my message. And then he messaged me back three words that I will never forget. It said, Jesus loves you. And I'm looking at this message like, whoa, what? I go on the Facebook profile to see if that's who I was really messaging, if, if this was really my brother, and sure enough, it was my brother. I would go on his Facebook profile, and he gave his life to Christ the night before. He threw away the gun, the bullets, all the, all the drugs that he was selling, pipes, crack pipes, meth pipes, all the lighters, everything, anything you could think of, he threw away. And I was just like, what? This, this, this can't be happening. Like, tonight's the night, this dude that put out a hit out on me and my family, tonight's gonna be the night that he dies, plain and simple. It's either he's gonna die or I'm gonna die, that's it. And when I read those three words, I actually started speaking it. I, I read, Jesus loves you. And then I started speaking it, and I said, Jesus loves you. And then I started putting it in my mind like, this dude hanging on a cross loves me. That's who Jesus is. He died on the cross for me because he loves me. Ever since that day, I believe that's when a seed was planted inside my heart. I was still out there doing drugs, still out there being stupid, shooting at people. Me and my brother shooting at people in front of um, a Hutchinson prison. I got to the point where I was even laying hands on my wife in front of my sons. My father-in-law was, was like, I'm done with you, Mark. You know, and he, he put up a fence and he said, you're not allowed on my property pretty much. So I decided to sleep in the back of my Suburban in front of his house because I didn't want anybody to take my family or I didn't want my family to run away from me, I guess. And I remember being in the back of Suburban, I remember sitting there smoking some dope and just, just looking at a, at a pipe, just looking at this big lighter and just like, this is the life I chose. I remember. You know, just, just sitting back and looking at everything that I was going through, everything that I was doing, everything that was just happening in my life. And, and uh, I just cried out to God. I said, God, if you're real, then, then show me. Like, I started confessing everything. I started confessing things that I still can't even say still to this day. I started confessing wicked things that were deep down in my heart. And I confessed that Jesus Christ was my Lord and Savior and, and all I could say after that was just like, thank you, Jesus, that's it. Well, just thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And um, I remember falling asleep, waking up, and even the air was different. The air was so fresh. I tried to get sober like five, six times, I think, and, and it could never work. But this time, I didn't have any withdrawals. This time, I didn't have any shock to my body. This time, I wasn't craving anything. I, broke the pipe, threw away the lighters, and we went to a trap house that day because we had nowhere else to go, me and my wife. And this dude looks at me and, and he throws me a meth pipe and he throws me a bag, a bag of shards and was like, it's time to wake up. And I was like, 
I've already been waking up. I'm gonna try out this Jesus thing. Um, I've been coming to Grace Revolution, um, me and the family for about going on three years now. I'm a Christian artist or rapper, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and I was uh, asked to open up and do a rap concert here at Grace Revolution. I remember coming up here to do this uh, concert and whenever you try to look cool by holding the microphone, you, you, you hold the microphone like covering the actual mic, you know, I'm trying, to, trying to rap all cool. And uh, I remember the sound guys in the back was like, we can't get a, get a good sound, good quality. And then I remember um, hearing the man's voice. It's like, hey man, you don't hold the mic like that. And uh, I remember the lights were on, so I really couldn't see who it was. Um, but this man sounded kind of, kind of mad. I remember seeing this uh, this dude, grown man, all jade out. Man, I'm talking Jay from from his hat, probably down to his socks. He's all jade out, walking up to the to the uh, stage, and he grabs a microphone and he's like, "You don't hold the mic like this. You hold it like this." And back in my mind, I'm like, you know, who is this dude? You know, he needs to be back in the back, you know, working that sound or whatever. And anyways, we do the concert, we end up leaving. And at this time, God is leading us to move here to Wichita. And there's so many people um, reaching out to us left and right of um, wanting to do stuff for Marky, wanting to help us move and, and, and all this, and sending us prayers and all that, and just sending their love. Well. Uh, some dude hit me up and said, hey man, I want to do a video on your son and your family, and I want to share it at Grace Revolution. Well, when I heard Grace Revolution, I was like, hey, I've been there, you know? Um, so we ended up meeting at a mutual friend's house, and I see this dude just walking in saying, hey, what's up, bro? And I, I look at him like, wait a minute, this is that same dude and was like, hey, you don't hold the mic like this, you hold it like this, all jayed out. I mean, all jayed out again. So I'm just like, whoa, wait a minute. We end up going here to uh, this place called Grace Revolution Church. Um, the pastor starts uh, sharing Marky's video. He's sharing a little bit of his testimony. And what hit me was, uh, he said, I've been to prison. Um, Whenever he said that, I looked over at my wife, Melissa, and she looked at me and said, this is the place where we need to be. This is, this is our home. Ever since then, man, me and Pastor Tim, we've been, we've been tight, I mean. So I look up to that dude. I, I, I look up to Christ in that dude. So by coming here to Grace Revolution and, and, and coming every Sunday and just uh, really uh, getting deeper into God's Word, um, God has really opened up the door and allowed, um, allowed me to lead a men's Bible study. Pastor Tim called me up and, and um, God had already confirmed it even before he called me up. I was like, hey, bro, you want to get into this, this book in the Bible? And I was like, bro, I'm already on it. The Lord's been putting that on my heart already to to get deeper in it. And uh, so I've been given the opportunity or the privilege to, to, to lead men's Bible study instead of, uh, instead of leading people into fights and to, you know, shooting at people or doing drugs or whatever it was. I'm leading men to God. I'm leading men to, to, to the Word of God and what, what He can do. He's real, man, that, you know, there, there is no doubting God, there, there, there is no doubting His existence. There is no doubting His presence. He's here. He's, he's living inside me right now. He's living inside my life right now. You know, the, the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the grave lives inside me now. And, and if God could use a guy like me, He could use you too.